Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Cisco Systems, with support from NetApp. And now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for Oracle Open World 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Frick, general manager of CUBE, Silicon Valley Operation. Our next guest is Dave Well, CTO, Chief Evangelist of House of Brick Technologies uh, in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. That's right in I the remember, center of the That's how I remember um, interviewing your, your colleague. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. You it's guys have been be on there. before. I just, Dave Vellante was just here getting going to watch the Patriots game, but he did mention that you guys have been the, the granddaddy of Oracle virtualization or virtualization of Oracle, been around for a while. Now it's the hottest trend. You guys were like the pioneers. We what, did. Uh, what's the update? I mean, are they, <laughs> they getting it right? I mean, what's, your, what's well, the big picture? Oracle spreads a little bit of FUD around Oracle on VMware. Uh, Oracle might not be too enthusiastic about the idea that their workloads get virtualized because it hemorrhages that processor-based licensing revenue. <laughs> but that would be the only reason. But the fact of the matter is that the masses are so enthralled with the financial benefits and the operational benefits and the HA, the business continuity benefits of doing it, that they're tired of watching their competitors leave them in the dust. So the herd really is beginning to move through the chasm, across the chasm into tier one Oracle production on VMware. We're seeing a lot of it. Yeah, it just makes a lot of business sense. I mean, virtualization offers a lot of innovations. What was the driver that, that you think really got things moving? Well, was I it think the competition pressure? Was it loss of customers, uh, all of the above? I don't think it's so much loss of customers, although the financial pressure indirectly can lead to loss of customers. Yeah. But organizations, especially the software providers, uh, they have to be efficient, they have to compete, they have to abbreviate their product development life cycles. And it's impossible to do that if you are tied back into the environment that we were in when I was a kid with native hardware. <laughs> yeah. And it takes three and a half months to get something approved and provisioned and you have this correlation of one-to-one -one between a developer and a dedicated piece of hardware. We can't do that anymore. Those days are gone. Yeah, certainly and, the DBA's role is changing. The yeah. role of the network is changing. Here we're inside the Cisco booth. Uh -huh. uh, Cisco's changing, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. How, is, how do you rate Cisco on that spectrum of change? Well, I think Cisco's leading the, the way. Uh, House of Brick woke up a couple of years ago and realized that this Maverick this network provider that suddenly in 2009 decided they wanted to build servers and we were like, what? This is crazy. And then they began to get our attention. Now we look across our tier one Oracle customer base, Oracle and VMware customer base, and the vast, vast majority of those shops are Cisco UCS shops. So Cisco's got the engineering, they've got the innovation, and uh, the price points in the x86 mar market are so homogenous that you might as well go with the leader. Yeah, and they certainly put the pricing pressure down and maintain the performance, hence the numbers, Jeff, we looked at, uh, at, uh, at Hadoop Summit, Cisco, show the North American numbers. Right. But still, when you're number one that fast, I mean, the accounting issues aside, it's still a big number. Mm -hmm. And yeah. whether it's true or not, whether the, you say they're number one or not, it's still a big accomplishment with UCS. So what does that mean for the dudes who are in IT, right? Now, at the end of the day, with the vendors, the vendors are saying, hey, we're the vendors, do, you know, we're number one M1 or whatever. Now the IT guys actually got to go do the work. They got to provision, they got to make the data center sm smaller and more effective with this footprint pressure and with cloud. So how does all this shoot forward for the customer? What's your take on it? What's your experience? Yeah. Well, I'll talk to you about a couple of referenceable accounts that we've been talking about at the show. Um, the First National Bank of Omaha, they've been doing VMware and they're very good at it. The United States largest privately held banking holding company. They've been doing it for nine years and they've been doing Oracle on VMware for part of that. And the DBAs, they were concerned. But once they got into the provisioning, once they saw the stability, they were sold. CETA, another organization that we've been talking about at the show that 
uh, fairly unknown here in the United States, but they provide services into the majority of the airline industry offshore for baggage, lost baggage handling, and a lot of other things. And uh, they used to make emotional hallway decisions based on their architectures. And you've heard it before, business units, they didn't even know how to pronounce HA 10 years ago, and now they all want it. They want to be on rack. And so they were over-provisioning rack where it was unnecessary, whereas single instance Oracle on VMware HA may have been, may have been plenty good. Uh, so these organizations now are making uh, strategic decisions as to which workloads get these more expensive architectures. And they're finding that tier one Oracle on VMware HA gives them plenty of HA, especially for those workloads that don't have formal service level agreements. Just a couple of examples. Uh, development. Uh, the developers at CETA were very leery. And after they discovered, uh, they took their uh, lost luggage tracking system live, and uh, CETA's DBA manager, Chris Cook, got back with them and said, OK, so now what do you think? And they said, we love it. Very common. So the pressures come from outside. Yeah, it's really getting an applause. Yeah, <laughs> really. And it's not my presentation either, so. I gotta, the pressures also come from inside. So I got to ask you about uh, the Dockerization the container model. Docker, getting a lot of buzz at VMworld. Obviously <laughs> huge financing. You've been following the whole Docker developer trend, um, the containerization. <laughs> um, what's your, do you have any take on that? Any opinion of that, of that trend? I haven't been, uh, I haven't been following the the, uh, the live stuff that's going on, so sorry I can't help you with that okay, one. No, no worries, yeah. no worries. So on OpenStack, the, uh, have you been following the OpenStack stuff? Absolutely. What do you think about, yeah. so what do you think about OpenStack? I think that um, the uh, we've got, when they made those announcements at VMworld, the fact of the matter is, that the vast majority of the workloads are on vSphere. And we get very little pressure within our install base having to do with non-VMR virtualization platforms. They're all two hardware depreciation life cycles behind VMware. And so it's of interest, yes, but our customers just aren't worried at least the people that we're talking yeah. to, the yeah. people that I'm talking to aren't yeah. worried about OpenStack APIs. I understand why VMware is going there. It's a hedge. And, yeah. It's kind of a hedge. But, I yeah. mean, why not uh, Our core technology it? is, and it's another reason why I really don't follow these other trends, and that is because it's, it's core technology on vSphere. Yeah. And uh, to, to answer the question a different way, I used to refer to vSphere a couple of years ago as a premier virtualization platform. I don't anymore. I've, for three years, I've been referring to it as the premier platform, period. Uh, so we're talking about these tier one Oracle workloads getting off native hardware onto VMware. And that's where I spend the majority of my, my time. Yeah, and that's because a lot of the VMware customers are moving up the stack yeah. with functionality. Yeah. And with virtualization exploding, that's the primary platform. Is that what yeah. you're saying? All, yeah, the, all so the investment dollars. I was there, I heard the keynote, yeah. both issues discussed at length, and it, uh, for my particular customer base and my emphasis, they're, they're sidebars for me. What are the biggest IT trends that you see within your customer base? Because you have a premier customer base, you know, pretty, pretty elite, I mean, a lot, a lot of people do Thank you. POCs yeah. with Hadoop, and you got OpenStack tire kickers going on, so that's happening. It's uh -huh. an organic process, yeah. but it hasn't yeah. read, reached the, the kind of the tier that you're, you're competing at. What are some of the biggest challenges right now? Is it transformation, or is that just a punchline? Is it really cloud? What are some of the things that you see? Well, what we see, and again, I'm going to address it very differently than the keynotes at VMworld would have addressed it. The customer base that I'm dealing with has DBAs that understand that they have to go here into virtualization. But public cloud virtualization for them is way down the road. They're going to be insisting on seeing this virtualization within their own um, private clouds where they can hold their peer technical administrators accountable. So our customer base, these tier one Oracle production workloads are going to be a private cloud play largely for quite some time to come. The other thing associated with that is we see trends having to do with DR adoption. 
DR moving down in the stack, moving down from data guard, which is all we used to have as Oracle D DBAs 10 years ago. Now moving down, the majority of these shops, including SMB shops, have uh, array replication and host replication technologies licensed. And 10 years ago, they were too expensive. They didn't have them capitalized. So the DR protection is moving down in the stack. That gives us, when we throw the virtual shroud around that, that gives us 100% reliable DR, something that these shops never would have dreamed of before. So I got to ask the Cisco question. How did Cisco and UCS help you guys help, help your customers? What did they do specifically? Well, two things that Cisco did for us that just dazzled us when uh, we said, what are you doing with this 2009 <laughs> initiative that they got into manufacturing? The first one was DBAs love memory. And they provided a box back in 2010 that would allow me, using the old cheap 4 gig DIMMs, to scale beyond 128 gig installed up to 196 gig 192 gig Yeah, all installed. that extra memory laying around. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, so we as DBAs were absolutely thrilled. Our tier one Oracle on VMware customers, they don't have pressure on CPU, they have pressure on memory. And so when you get into the eight gig DIMMs, now we've got some pretty hefty footprints uh, with uh, two socket boxes. The other thing that they did, we are an HA shop, and they introduced these service profiles, which nobody in the industry can touch. Yeah. For the entire soul of that box now is lifted up and becomes provisionable, yeah. much more uh, ably, uh, agile. Soul, than I like it used that word, soul. Yeah, it's the, it's the and jewels then, uh, and the soul and, and the And then when we have an HA failure, how long it takes to lift that whole thing and reprovision it? There's far less work and far less time involved. So those are two uh, keys for us that are very important. And one of the reasons now that we really push, even though we don't resell hardware, we really push the Cisco UCS platform. Whether it be blades, whether it be rack, or if people need an engineered system for us, that's V-Block all the way. Yeah, and also the fabs, they, they did some incremental upgrades on the footprint, mm -hmm. and energy, it's good. They're checking the boxes on those things, but this service profile seems to be getting a lot of traction. And it that's is, a, and that's, for good reason. Yeah, I mean, there are lots of, pretty much, you said the word soul, but, Pretty much all our top customers are saying the same thing, that abstraction, and take that and put it up a layer almost, if you will, have that soul of the box yeah. uh, portable. But more than that, the fact that they came out with these two pieces of engineering that really got our attention, the memory mapping, mm -hmm. very inexpensive memory mapping, because with the memory at the, at the scale that our customers install it, I'll just give you GE appliances and lighting, for example running Cisco Blades in their Oracle and VMware cabinets. They used to provision 512 gig per four socket box. They don't do that anymore. It's a minimum terabyte from the factory. Uh, two socket blades, we encourage people, or uh, two socket racks, we encourage people to get those with 768 gig installed. So at those memory uh, footprints, the cost of the DIMMs alone can shadow the cost of the rest of the box. And so when Cisco came out with the M2 that mapped using the old cheap DIMMs into those scales of memory, yeah, it had our attention <laughs> in a real hurry. Game changer. Awesome, well hey, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE, sharing your perspective. House of Brick Technology, sounds like uh, Blues Club, House of Blues. Um, it comes from one of my favorite fairy tale, is where the name <laughs> comes from. Love, love, love the name, um, appreciate it, Dave Welch coming inside here. CTO Chief Evangelist, House of Brick Technologies in Nebraska, welcome to, welcome to a great week here, we're psyched to have you. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, day one wrapping up, and theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Jeff Frick, we'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.